evil of war sin. Spontaneous. Okay, so inevitable means what? It's bound to happen. So it can't stop from happening. So if there's bleeding going on from the um, client, she's not making a cervical change, um, it's inevitable, you know, this, no. Inevitable means that there is, they, you know, there could be no heart tones, there's bleeding involved to make the cervical change. So it just means that she's going to deliver this baby, you know, at some point. So it's bound to happen. So we can't stop it, it's just going to happen. Okay? What are we gonna do if there's an inevitable, uh, inevitable abortion? She delivers a 14 week fetus, what are some things that we can offer? For the purpose of what? So they can see it. So they can view baby, so they can spend that time with the baby. So we always offer to view products of conception. Okay, what's a missed miscarriage? So the fetus has, is there a heartbeat? No. No. And where are the products of conception? Still inside the uterus. Still inside, in the utero. So mm -hmm. she hasn't expelled anything. So the client, is she going to have some bleeding? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Ectopic. Ectopic pregnancy. So what are some expected findings if our patient comes in and we're, um, we're suspecting a ruptured ectopic pregnancy? What are some signs? Sharp pain. Unilateral staph pain. What's that sign called? The colon's sign. So remember that blue discoloration. Um, where is the most common site for an ectopic pregnancy? Fallopian tube. tube. And if it is rupture, if it's not ruptured, and it's an ectopic pregnancy, how are we going to treat her? With what medication? Methotrexate. Methotrexate. Okay. What are some expected findings uh, with severe preeclampsia? What's their blood pressure look like? Hi. Sorry, what was it? High blood pressure, so what are the values? 160 over 110. Or they can, you know, have a little elevated, so 140 over 90s, but they can have severe features. What are those severe features? Seizures. Oh. Yep. So protein area greater than two plus. Okay. What about the reflexes? Hyperreflexia. So how would we chart hyperreflexia? What are how are we gonna chart that? Plus four. Like plus four. Okay. What about is there any edema going on? Where we where is most of that edema? Where would we find it on that patient? Hands, legs, feet. You know, the hip area, sacrum. <laughs> okay, uh, magnesium. Did you say that the edema sign on legs, feet, and what was the other one? Sacrum? Yeah, sacral. Sacral edema. So it can be down here. Magnesium sulfate. What's the purpose of magnesium sulfate for preeclampsia? Prevent seizure activities. Um, what are we uh, monitoring for magnesium toxicity? What are those values? What are the signs that they are experiencing magnesium toxicity? Lack of tendon reflex. Sorry, blushing. Lack of tendon reflex. Absence of uh, deep tendon reflexes. 
Okay, what else? Um, what? Less than what? Okay, what else? Urinary output less than 30 milliliters an hour. Okay, what else? What about, what are we, else are we supposed to, LOC, are we supposed to check that? Level of consciousness, so if they're experiencing toxicity, is it increased or decreased? Decreased, decreased level of consciousness. What are we gonna do if we're suspecting toxicity? Priority nursing. Stop it. Stop it, and then what should, should we have at bedside? Calcium. The antidote. Calcium what? Calcium gluconate. Okay, medication given for preterm birth or preterm labor. What are they? Bethlehem. Not oxytocin. So we're stopping her to, from going into preterm labor. What'd you say? Terbutaline. Terbutaline. Yeah. Okay. What else? Nifedipine, yeah, nifedipine, good job. Um, there are two more. Nifedipine sulfonate and endomethacin. So we have endomethacin, magnesium sulfate, nifedipine, and terbutaline. Magnesium sulfate. What is beta methazone? So help with fetal lung maturity. So it's a steroid. What is the LS ratio that we give beta methazone? One, one. one, one to one. one. So if you one. have the LS ratio of baby and it's one to one, <coughs> we give beta methazone. If you have an LS ratio of the baby that's two to one, what are we gonna do? <coughs> what are we gonna do? What's two to one? What do we say two to one was for the LS ratio? Normal. Normal. So are we gonna get beta methadone? No. No. Baby's doing fine. Um, gestational diabetes and exercise. So, um, with exercise, are we going to increase exercise or decrease in exercise for our diabetic patients? Decrease. Increase. Increase. Um, what about, um, car did you guys read up on carbohydrates intake? Should be limited by 50% of caloric intake. 50% of what? Of the caloric intake. Yes. Mm -hmm. Liburide. So if we have our diabetic patients taking liburide, it is appropriate for pregnant clients. So you guys may see that in pharmacology. It can be contraindicated in pregnancy. So G L Y. B as in boy, U R I D as in dog, E. Glyburide. So minimal amounts cross the placenta. So if they're taking glyburide, it's totally fine. Um, are women who have gestational diabetes at risk for getting diabetes? Yes. In the future? Yes, type 2 diabetes. What are some risk factors for placenta previa? Non-painful, bright red. Risk factors. Oh. <laughs> High blood pressure. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, I got this one. Oh, we got it. <laughs> risk factors, what type of patients? Smokers. I'm sorry? Smokers. Smokers. High blood pressure. Cocaine use. Previous placenta previa. What about a placental eruption? What's the most <coughs> common? High blood pressure. High blood pressure. Okay. 
Okay, um, nursing care uh, for placenta previa. So you have someone come in, she says she has placenta previa. What are we gonna do? Assess her. Check the baby. Put baby on the monitor. Check her vital signs. What about placental abruption? IV first. So they come in, she's, she's, you know, pallor. She's not responding. She's bleeding profusely from her vagina. What's the first thing we're gonna do? IV. IV access. IV access. Okay, expected findings for placenta previa. Bright red, painless vaginal bleeding. What about placental abruption? Sudden onset of uterine pain. Dark red. Get away from the prune juice. Dark, dark red, painful bleeding. So sudden onset of intense localized uterine pain with dark red vaginal bleeding. So their uterus feels like this. Fill the table. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of the use of an ultrasound if someone is bleeding? An abdominal ultrasound, if you want to be specific. See where they determine the location of the placenta. What's contraindicated in placenta previa and the placental eruption? Vaginal examination? Yes, correct. Why? Awesome. Do more damage. Do more more yes. How do we know um, our patient is, um, has a placental eruption and she may be in DIC? What are some signs that she's in DIC? We know. Bleeding gums, petechiae around usually what? The IV site. The IV site. Okay. What else? What about the urine? What does it look like? No. Oh, bloody urine. Bloody urine. Okay. Expected findings for a hydatiform mole. Prune juice. Prune juice. A dark brown vaginal bleeding. What about the uterus? It's large. It's larger and higher fundal height. ACG levels? High. Elevated. They're high. Um, they can have passage of tissue described as what? Grape like clusters. What are some adverse effects for terbutaline? Chest discomfort. Chest discomfort, okay. Complications. Mm -hmm. Hibernia. Yep. Tachypnea, trauma, vomiting. Chest discomfort. It's on the PowerPoint. This, so we have chest discomfort, palpitation, dysrhythmias, tachycardia, tremors, nervousness, vomiting. Hypokalemia, hyperglycemia, and hypotension. What are tocolytic medications? What are they used for? What do they do to contractions? They stop. They suppress contractions. Okay. I'm guessing some of you didn't do the study guide, so I'll help you out with this one. <laughs> um, education for dilation and curatage, DMC procedure. Did anyone look that up? Okay, so what is some education that we're going to give to the patient after they have a DMC done? So we're going to discharge them home after having a DMC. Don't get pregnant after for a year. I'm sorry? Don't get pregnant for a year. No, they can. Oh. No, uh, so do you think that they should, okay, so monitor their bleeding, definitely. Um, should they have sexual intercourse? No. no. Should they put tampons? No. Or stick any other things up in there? No. No, so they should have, they shouldn't have vaginal intercourse um, or the use of any tampons for two weeks. <coughs> um, 
what about their diet? So if it's, um, especially like after a surgery, uh, to help replace red blood cells, what, so high what? High iron and protein. Would we give them aspirin for pain management? No. No. Why? Anticoagulant. So what can we give them? Yep. Ibuprofen and NSAID. Uh, what is some nursing education um, someone for with severe preeclampsia or even um, preeclampsia, like mild preeclampsia, so say they're not in the severe ranges yet, what are some things that we can educate them on through that home? Bed rest. Bed rest. How are they laying? Left lateral. Um, how about their um, intake? So they're, you know, should they be eating High sodium foods? Mm -hmm. No. no. Um, how much water should they be drinking? Mm -hmm. At least six to eight ounces. Six to eight ounces. Ah, six to eight glasses of water per day. Eight ounces. Um, what about the environment? So if they have a headache, so usually they have this headache. What are some things that can help alleviate that? Mm -hmm. Turn off the lights. So a dark, quiet environment. What about the stimuli? Low stimuli. Low stimuli. So do you think they should have, you know, their seven kids screaming, <laughs> running around? No, definitely not. That will raise their blood pressure. <laughs> um, what are some risk factors for um, someone getting severe preeclampsia? Yep. Yeah. What else? What did they have already? High blood pressure. pressure. High blood pressure. Hypertension. What else? What's another one we looked at? Diabetes. Um, what's the treatment for someone with, um, in severe uh, that has severe preeclampsia? So if they have severe preeclampsia. Bye. What are we going to do? What are we going to initiate? What medication? Magnesium. Magnesium sulfate. What should you have at bedside? Seizure precautions. What's going to resolve preeclampsia? Yeah, calcium glutamate as an antidote. Have that at bedside. And then what's, what's going to... Delivery of baby and the placenta to resolve the preeclampsia. Okay. Um, you may have a couple of questions with therapeutic communication. So what's therapeutic communication? Not talking to the patient in a in an inappropriate way. <laughs> what is there for what? So how are we communicating using therapy communication? So are the um, the answers that we're giving them, do we keep them closed-ended or open-ended? Open-ended. Mm -hmm. open so what's closed-ended? So if someone says, you know what, I'm in so much pain, I just don't know what to do anymore. Are you going to say, well, here, here's some pain meds, hope this helps. <laughs> That's closed-ended. He's like, you know what? I know you had a couple of pain medications. You tried a couple of pain medications. Which one works better for you? Whatever. Have them, you know, they should be able to answer you. You should be able to, when you're using an open-ended um, whatever answer to their question, they should repeat something back to you. So it shouldn't just, you know, tell them, like, let me give you pain medication. That pain's going to go in and then stop it there. You know, you need to, you know, talk about. Here, let, let's try these several options that we have for pain medication to try and help you alleviate with this pain. And then there's something like, oh, thank you so much. Whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah. Open-ended. You look at me like you're confused. Yes. Therapeutic communication is hard. So therapeutic communication <laughs> takes psych, your psych class out of therapeutic communication when you have therapeutic communication. And 
in all your other classes. So that's you good. Know, we'll out. Yes, <laughs> because therapeutic communication is totally different in psych versus you know at bedside here with our med surge patients or um, peds patients. So confusing. Yeah. So just remember, <coughs> therapeutic communication. Just keep it open ended. So you want to address their feelings, but also give them options. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You guys will find the answers when you know there's a ther therapeutic question. You guys should be able to depict which one sounds more therapeutic. <laughs> That's the closest example I can get. <laughs> Um, okay, and then you guys are going to have uh, four dosage calculation questions. They're pretty straightforward. And then you have a total of six um, next gen questions. So let me. Um, <clears throat> yeah. ABCs will get you a long way when it comes to these questions. Not initiate the blood transfusion okay. right away. So we'll start with fluids, okay. but we also need to get like a. Okay. So would we assume that? Usually you don't need a consent when it's an emergency. Oh, okay. Now, unless they have some type of, if they're a Jehovah's Witness, then yeah, we can't just do it, especially if they're wearing like a bracelet or it's in their file, <coughs> enough, then we can't give them blood products. Okay. You can still give them liquids. It's our Monday. 